Right, what drew me to the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965? Well, it's a much neglected war, despite being some very large tank engagements with up to two or three hundred tanks being involved at any one time. It was the largest tank battles post-World War II until the Arab-Israeli conflicts. Um, the two countries have gone to war at least three times, as well as constant border skirmishes, for various historical reasons. And there are, even today, there are still border clashes which flare up every now and again. So both sides have built up their armed forces with the thought of hostilities against each other. And in the 1960s, the Pakistanis broadly went for American support whilst the Indian forces broadly went for British weaponry. So it's an interesting clash between two technologies and two tactical doctrines. The armoured bit of the warfare is the exciting bit because I've always been drawn to the Centurion tank developed in 1945 to take on the Tigers and Panthers. After Korea, this was its uh, main, uh, main use on the battlefield with the Indian forces. The Pakistanis uh, put a lot of their money into a smaller army, but had some very well-equipped tank regiments uh, with the Patton tanks. They used Patton tanks, Chaffees and Shermans, and some M36s too. Uh, whereas the, I say, the Indians broadly used Centurions and uh, Shermans as well. Uh, so it's a mixture of what we would call Second World War kit and later Cold War kit, uh, Cold War. Eastern Bloc, Western Bloc stuff. Both sides fought very bravely, uh, um, there's no doubt about that, but the uh, Indian forces tend to have the tactical upper hand, and though on paper the uh, pattern was a more modern design than the Centurion, generally the Centurions came out on top. The Indians also fielded a few AMX French light tanks, which were easy meat for the uh, Pakistani crews. Um, these are the days of still with anti-tank guns, both sides using uh, six pounders, 25 pounders, uh, 17 pounders on the, Indi on the Indian side. And very infancy of anti-tank missiles, the very first came in just around that time. The other reason why I like the period is that they've got Deccan's horse and uh, the Punjabis and Raputes and there's Gurkhas. So there's all what I would call the exotic Indian, Pakistani, Baluchis, uh, all these very famous Hodson's Horse, um, who were all famous regiments of the, of the old British Raj, all with their fine um, traditions and uniforms. From a bolt action point of view, it means I can field lots of centurions and patterns, which is just lovely, great fun to paint, great models, and if needs be, uh, and of course I can use uh, British infantry and American infantry to bulk out the Pakistani and Indian forces because it's really Second World War kit is what we're all wearing and just paint the uh, uh, flesh areas appropriately to have a darker complexion and you've got your Indian and Pakistani troops but within that again to make it more interesting you can have Sikh troops wearing the turbans and of course you can field uh, units of Gurkhas the dreaded Gurkhas on the Indian side to make a really quite exotic looking army really uh, the other thing I really got excited about was the jeeps. If you have a look at the, the armies, they're both fielding um, rec recoilless anti-tank weapons. I think it's the 106 mil, uh, which always looks so cool. And uh, I haven't been too slavish how I've made them, but at my great age, I just make things to look good. So I just grabbed a couple of jeeps and added the uh, breech section of the German 105 recoilless from the German Falschenjäger. And I cut an inner tube from a um, biro to make the long barrel and just stuck that on with super glue. And I think the result looks very pleasing. I made up my own rules for, I think, I'm not sure if they're, they're covered in the uh, Korean War book, the recordless anti tank rifles, I think. Uh, but I think they just look splendid models. On all the models, I've tried to model in crew members and putting in Stens and Brens and Thompsons, all the cool looking kit. Uh, and. Uh, spare tarp, tarp rolls and barrels and lots of jerry cans full of water and diesel and petrol uh, or, and then given everything a thick coat, coat of dust, dust one thing you get a lot of in India and Pakistan is dust 
most of the uh, area where the armor clashed was quite a fairly open country, which is better tank country, obviously uh, closed up forest or jungle would be no good for medium tanks. Uh, and a lot of it was in farm area, uh, so a lot of wheat fields and uh, uh, rice paddies and uh, off, quite often centered around railway centers. I'm just painting up a railway station at the moment. I'm using the El Alamein one that uh, we have that we're supposed to make and adding my own buildings to that to give some some house-to-house -house fighting. Uh, a few of them are the mud, mud brick buildings from uh, Renedra. And I combined a couple together to, to put two together to make one larger building. And it's been great fun weathering those and uh, so to give the guys some hard cover. I shall be buying a Sabre Jet in 172nd and uh, a Hawker Hunter as well. Uh, to do the ground support. Uh, both sides use Bofors anti-aircraft and, uh, and some 20 mils. Uh, so I've added a couple of Bofors guns as well, which are useful for A, keeping enemy aircraft at bay, and also for shooting up soft skins and infantry. So um, buying books, it's, it's, uh, at first I thought it'd be difficult to get information, but the internet is your friend, of course, and once you dig into it, uh, there's more out there than you'd ever believe. And there are some wonderfully professionally written books by officers of the India, Indian and Pakistani officers who are, are very proud martial races and uh, they've got some excellent books out there which you can buy quite cheaply on the internet. So that's the reason why I was drawn to it. Thank you for watching. All of the miniatures John used for his Indo-Pakistani forces are from our existing and upcoming bolt action range. Be sure to check them out at www.warlordgames.com. Take care.